So I've been working on this large acrylic painting of this snow leopard for the last couple of weeks and it's occurred to me that I've not actually done a fur painting video for a while. You might be thinking, well, why do I need a new fur painting video? And it's a good question because I do have loads of fur painting videos out there, but the answer is because as an artist, I am constantly trying to develop new techniques and new approaches to paint things. So over the last year or so, I've developed new methods and new techniques for painting fur that I think have vastly improved my experience and I thought I would share the process with you. The first part of my process can be split into two sections and it doesn't matter which section you do first or which stage you do first. Today, just because I've been painting a snow leopard, I thought I would show you my fur painting process for snow leopard. So the first section to the first layer, I'm going to start by just blocking in with some black where I want some of my spots to go. And I'm just using quite thick paint. I'm not watering it down very much, but I don't want there to be loads of texture on the paper itself. I want it to be quite smooth, not impasto, not like thick paint. So I'm just coming in and just looking for the shapes of the spots. If you wanted to, you could trace this out first or project it, which is something that I often do with my large paintings, but you can freehand it as well. Both processes work, and if I'm being very honest, I do not think it is cheating to trace if what you're trying to do is paint. If you're trying to learn how to draw, then don't trace. If you're trying to understand proportions, then don't trace. I'm not being too picky with everything. I'm not sort of worried too much about the placement for this. I'm just being quite rough. I'm using a filbert brush, but quite an old filbert brush. So it's still got some like frayed edges. It's not completely smooth. And some of those frayed edges can be really, really helpful creating like loose strands of fur. But I'm not bothered about that fur just yet. I'm not looking for that detail. I'm just looking for some little shapes. Doesn't even have to match your reference photo that closely. As long as it's following the body shape, as long as they're roughly in the right position, they, they don't have to be the same shape exactly. Just by getting the impression of those spots, that'll be enough for the painting. Okay, then I've got to just let that dry. I can speed it up with a hairdryer. The second part to this layer is just doing a wash of colour to remove some of that white background, the white canvas. So it doesn't matter whether you do your wash first and get rid of the white and then do your spots or do your spots and then do your wash. I'm just using a bit of raw umber, just over the top, just getting rid of some of that stark white. I like using raw umber um, as it's pretty neutral, but it's also quite warm as well. So the snow leopard itself, the painting that I'm doing that you've seen, that is a very cold painting. So the snow surrounding the snow leopard is very cold. And I wanted the snow leopard to be quite warm in contrast to that. So I'm using a warm underpainting or warm, not underpainting as such, but warm undervalue, warm wash, just to help me remind myself that the snow leopard needs to be much warmer than the background. It doesn't have to be completely smooth. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. That will be fine for the purpose of this video and for the purpose of this wash for any original painting that I'm doing. I now just have to wait for this to dry as well. I'm gonna just section this off with masking tape and what I'm gonna do is progressively move from one stage to the next so that at the end I'll have a piece that you can see all of the different stages of painting. The second stage of my painting process is the blocking stage. Now start doing a blocking of colour, just blocking in the basic shapes. So I focus on smaller sections 
trying to get the colours of this fur down. This stage is just all about the colours of the fur. I pre-mixed my colours. I like to do this on large pieces so that I can stay consistent with the colour scheme. And I'm just putting these blocks down. Brushwork doesn't have to be absolutely amazing. Nothing fancy here. Just trying to get in some of this colour. The colours themselves don't matter. So if you're like following along with this at home, you should be mixing up the colours you know, that you see. The more practice that you get doing that, the better at it you'll be. There's no sort of shortcut for that. These are just the colours that I saw in my Snow Leopard. You can see I am just being very rough with it. And because I'm using quite thick paint, I'm not watering it down at all, it can actually blend a little bit. So you can actually treat it a little bit like oils and blend the colours together as you paint, which is pretty cool. I am using acrylics, by the way. And you can just go around all of the picture doesn't matter if you go over these spots, you're going to go over those in another layer. Oh well, in the same layer. But we're just going through and picking out, it's just different colours that we can see. This stage is quite a new stage for me. It's an adaptation to a stage that I used to do, or, or I've started doing um, a few years ago. And I've just adapted it, and one of the important things of being an artist is that you're not constantly stuck in a rut of doing the same thing over and over and over again. You're constantly trying to develop, you're constantly trying to improve, learn different techniques and hopefully get better and better and better with your painting. This is actually not a faster process than what I used to do. This is a slower process but I much prefer the outcome. I much prefer the look to the fur, the feel to the fur, than some of my quicker techniques. So I think sometimes you've got to sacrifice your time for quality. Okay, and again, I'm still just using that same filbert brush. I've not changed brushes yet. So you don't need loads of fancy tools. A couple of brushes is all you need. And this would work with any Animal, tiger, lion, horses, pigs, cats, dogs, whatever you're doing, this is the technique that I would use. Building up some of those colours, those shapes. Doesn't matter if your brush gets a little bit dirty, that just helps with the blending. It can be a little bit dirty at this stage, as long as we're getting the values in the right place. As long as we're getting those lights and darks in the right place. And it doesn't matter for this stage whether you do dark over light, light over dark, just a combination of everything. It really, really doesn't matter. We're just putting paint onto the surface of the paper. So for an entire painting, if I'm doing the entire sort of fur of an animal, I would do all of this for every single part of that animal all in one go. I do the entire layer. And then still part of this same layer, just with a slightly smaller filbert brush now, I will come in with the black and just come back and add a little bit more to the spots. Just refining these shapes just a little bit, putting some nicer edges back on. But again, doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. Doesn't matter if some of the paint's still wet, that blending of the dark colours helps. This is the exact same approach that I would use if I was painting with oils, but you just have to wait a little bit longer for the layers to dry. Now I'm thinking a little bit more about the direction of the fur, and I'm making sure that my brush strokes match that. But I am still trying to be quite varied with those brush strokes. I don't want everything looking uniform. Snow leopards have quite like matted, thick fur, and it does go off in lots of different directions. So I do wanna, wanna show that in my painting. I'm gonna redo the tape again. You can see the difference between layer one and layer two already. The third step of this process 
I split it up into two stages. The first stage is putting in some darker sections of fur. So I mix up a sort of dark brown colour and then just using quite thin paint, just thin with water, I come in and I just look for the darker strands of fur, so around all of the spots. And I'm using quite transparent paint because it's so thinned down, some of the colours from underneath still show through. And this is where I start to look at the, the fur detail, obviously a little bit more. I want to leave plenty of gaps because I still want the colours that I've already put down to show through. I'm just putting in some darker sections. It doesn't matter if some of it starts to get a little bit more transparent, if some of it's a little bit more opaque, that variation is good. It means more variation in colour, more variation in texture. I'm making sure to leave plenty of gaps and to also just curl the hairs. We don't want them all looking exactly the same. More variation means closer to real life. Now I just repeat that process with a slightly lighter colour. So I'm now just looking for the lighter strands. Again, keeping it quite transparent. It's quite watered down. We don't want it to be overpowering the colours that we've already put down. Some of the fur wants to be a little bit longer in some areas and shorter in others. So I'm just doing some short, so like almost like dabbing the brush here. And then in the longer areas, I want to do more like strokes, mixing it up, just adding a little bit more variation. We can go a little bit lighter as well, just in some places. Okay, and then that is this layer done. Peel the tape off and hopefully now you can see the difference between the first, the second and the third layers of fur. The next part of the process involves glazing. So I'm just going to take a little bit of water and I'm just going to take a little bit of paint and I'm just going to water it down ever so slightly. So you can see that it's just watered down a little bit. So we can always add a little bit of water if it needs to be runnier. So I'm gonna go back to a filbert brush. I'm gonna just get a clean filbert brush that hasn't been used and a clean bit of water. Glazing is a method of applying thin layers of paint that changes the color of the picture. I'm just trying to put a little bit of warmth back into the highlighty areas. Just by putting on some of that yellow. And then I also want a little bit of Payne's Grey. This is a little bit more opaque, but I want to just cool down a couple of areas as well, specifically in the shadows. And that just helps to distinguish between the lights and shadows a little bit more. Now I want to get a little bit of raw umber. Also quite a transparent colour. Just going to take this and we just want to add a little bit more brown into some sections of this fur in places where the spots meet the fur and again in the shadows just over that Payne's grey in some places just like that. If I peel this back hopefully you can now see a little bit of a difference between here and here. It has been knocked back so it might not look quite as good as this stage but now we've got one final stage to really push this fur to the next level. The final stage of this process involves using the small detail brush just to add a few more opaque highlights and details to the fur. We can bring back some of those previously mixed up colours. It involves adding lighter sections like I'm doing here, bringing back some of the colours that I might have lost from that glazing step just in some places, just softening some of the details as well. I'm just building up lighter colours in some places, just a little bit more variation to the fur, just almost dotting again, just these loose strands that are going to be catching the light just in places, not everywhere. We can start coming in with some of the mid-tones again that may have been lost, and then we can come in with some even lighter sections just to grade up a touch more, picking out some of these lighter bits. We can come 
back in with our darks just in a few places just to make sure they're still visible and we've still got some shadows within this fur. Some final opaque touches just where that light is being hit and then there's one final step just with a little bit of the paint's grey and a little bit of white. I just want to create a mid-tone bluey grey, nice cold grey and then I'm just going to use that just on some of the spots just picking out some little bits of loose hair just on these just to tie them in a little bit more to the rest of the fur. And then I might even come back in with a little bit more black, just to really add a few final bits to these spots. And now peel the tape off so that you can see the difference between the final layers. And then there we go. That is my process for painting realistic fur in acrylics. I will be finishing the rest of this Snow Leopard piece over the next couple of weeks and I will be putting videos of this up on YouTube and on my Patreon channel, Studio Wildlife. So if you're not a patron, please do go and check that out. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about my fur painting technique and go into some of the biggest do's and don'ts when it comes to painting fur, then check out this video here. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.